Hello again. Welcome to another episode of Leading from Alignment with our good friend, John Opaluski. How are you today, John? Hey, Jim. I'm good. I'm excited. We're wrapping up a seven week series on the subject of mental and emotional well-being and boy we've talked about a lot of things we've talked about becoming our own best friend you know uh obeying the greatest commandment in its entirety Uh, we've unpacked what we think uh, and believe to be a healthy way to process the emotion of anger we've we've uh outlined a pathway to deal with abusive and difficult people. And, and last week yeah. in episode 179, we started the conversation about running on a full tank. Yes. Um, we proposed last week three baselines uh, that uh, are important to grab onto if we really truly want to have a fuller tank from the mental yeah. and emotional side of our life. We, we said these three, you can't get what you don't have. Yeah. Uh, two, we are emotional beings. Yes. And, and the implication there is we can't ignore that part of our humanity and thrive for very long. And three, we need to pay attention to three emotional indicators. It's hard yes. to um, be subjective about how much is in the tank. I think we need yeah. some practical markers. And so that's yeah. these markers are very practical. Um, right we said the first one uh, last week was the first one was paying attention to our pace or yes. our schedule. And we said, Hey, you know, if I looked at your calendar for the next three months, I could predict with a high degree of accuracy, um, how much fuel you're going to have in the tank. Yes. And so our calendar is a, is an objective indicator of how much fuel there is. And you know what? You can fool yourself about how much fuel you have in your tank, but your calendar yeah. doesn't lie. <laughs> Yeah. It's objective. Uh, yeah. And so today I'd like us to unpack the other two indicators, Jim. Uh, right so are, are, you, are you ready to rock and roll with this? I am. Hit me. Okay. Here's the second indicator, and that's your people. The first one is your pace. The second one is your your people or or your friendships. Uh, Ecclesiastes uh, 4, 9, 2 are better than one because they have a good return for their work. Yeah. Uh, you know, we said last week that 42% of pastors – in 2022, indicated they were seriously considering quitting the ministry. Uh, yeah. Very alarming, right? Yeah. And we said the top three indicators or, or contributors to that were stress, isolation, yeah. and yeah. politics. And I want to deal with the isolation factor. Right. Um, yeah. You know, we know this, Jim. You, you've you pastored a long time. I pastored for a lot of years. Leadership sets you up for isolation. Yeah. And, it, and isolation is good. I don't even like the word isolation. I like the word solitude actually better. Uh, solitude okay. is good for you, but only in small doses. Yeah. Uh, the, the more isolated I become, the more my thinking patterns get strange. The more isolated yeah. <laughs> I become, my decision making um, gets uh, cloudy. Um, yeah, we Jim, you listened to a podcast, another podcast that was recommended to us. Uh, yeah, and the, the former Surgeon General of the United States uh, was talking about the science of loneliness. Yeah, can you tell me like one of the thoughts or two of the thoughts from that podcast, real quick, that really hit you because he was dealing with this second indicator: your people. Yeah, well, that that loneliness is a precursor to everything from depression to disease to, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's like no one ever said I was so lonely that I got a master's degree. <laughs> you know, I was so lonely, I got in shape. What comes after lonely is destructive always. So he was talking about the, yeah, the pain of isolation and then the lies that are easily believed and the deterioration, the rapid deterioration of mental and physical. And I would, I would add to this, he did not, but spiritual health that comes from that isolation is it's very dangerous. It's toxic. It's poison. Yeah. I think it was John Ortberg Ortberg that said, you'll live longer eating Twinkies with friends than broccoli alone. Yeah. (laughs) That's brilliant. Yeah, Yeah. that is brilliant. And it's true. Yeah. And and as a leader, this isn't easy, right? This is a hard part of your world to develop. But if you want to run on a full mental and emotional tank, you're going to have to 
block off time in your calendar to spend with healthy, safe, yeah. replenishing people. Please, yeah. please, 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 yeah. please don't skip on the relationships that fill your tank. You right. absolutely need those. God created you. He hardwired you and me for friendship. And yeah. we don't have enough time to unpack for you as a lead pastor, you know, all of the variables that go into that. Let us just say this, yeah. that in some way, shape or form, using good sense and caution and wisdom, you must develop this part of your world or yeah. you set yourself up for a host of issues that will shorten your leadership yes. run. Yeah. I, you know, but one of the rules we use here on our staff is if someone asks you how you're doing and no one in the room knows you're lying when you say fine, you're not close enough to the people around you. There you go. We, you have to have people that actually can read your body language, that know you well enough to go, are you okay? It doesn't, you don't seem okay. I'm, I'm fine. And we, we were programmed now as a staff, like, call me on that. Let's call each other on that. Are you okay? And they say, yeah. Okay. To another question then, why'd you just lie to me? And let's yeah. go to lunch and talk about it. And sometimes it's a day off. Sometimes it's a serious problem. Sometimes you misread the situation, but it's nice to know that you're surrounded by people that are going to ask that question and mean it. And that's one, one of the wonderful fruits of friendship is people know you well enough to know when you're hiding something, you know? And I think we experience that you and I. Yeah. Yeah. We get, we get on a, you know, before we start recording, we spend some time together. And if you ask yeah, me how always. I'm doing and I said, I'm good. And you know, right. If I'm, yeah being yeah. straightforward or whether I am hiding uh, and you say, well, John, yeah. you don't sound good or John, what? No, I don't believe you. What's going yeah. on. And I appreciate, yeah. I appreciate that you love me enough Same here. and you're close yeah. enough to me that you can notice that. And hopefully I do that uh, for you as yeah. well. So your people yeah. look, if I, again, I go back to your calendar and if I don't see any friendship time blocked off on your calendar, yeah, I can pretty, pretty much predict that you're going to be in trouble when it comes to the amount of fuel you have in the, your emotional and mental tank. So your people yeah. matter tremendously. Let, let me give you the third indicator yeah. uh, okay. on that emotional fuel gauge of yours, and that is your plan. And by plan, I mean emotional maintenance plan. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, mm -hmm. uh, I got, we have two cars in the garage, and both of them have a maintenance plan. Yeah change the oil every several thousand miles. And I think if you do synthetic, it's every 10,000 miles. Yeah. And, yeah you know, yeah. rotate the tires every 5,000 miles. And, and the whole purpose behind that is to get more life out of the car and to have that car run mm -hmm. better. Uh, yeah. and, and, and so I think we're so in tune with maintaining our cars. Very few of us have a game plan for our emotional maintenance or men mental yeah. maintenance. And so I'd like to talk about that. You know, this yeah. here's, here's a four piece, simple to understand, maybe not simple to implement all the time. Yeah. Plan. yeah. So are you ready, Jim? To let yeah. Me jump in? yeah. Okay. Number one, so here's, here's the first item that you need to add into your maintenance plan. That's laughter. Yeah. Laughter. Proverbs 17.22, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but yeah. a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Yeah. And and when I'm teaching on this subject in front of a crowd, I ask, have you ever felt better after a good belly laugh? Everybody raises their Always. hand. Always. They've experienced yeah. Yeah. that, that, that feel-good rush mm -hmm. of chemicals that are released in our brain and the tamping down yeah. of stress. You know, Jim, yes. I like you for a lot of reasons, but one of the reasons <laughs> is that hanging out with you makes me laugh. We laugh together. Yeah, we laugh together. Yeah, we do. And it's <laughs> one of the things that just fills my my soul. What do you think about this first item, laughter? Yeah, do you remember the the, the movie The Bucket List? Yeah, I remember the movie. I never, I never watched it, but I remember it. So they're going to do a certain number of things before they die. One of them is laugh until they cry. And, and there's a scene where they laugh until they cry that when I see it, I, I laugh until I cry. And it's, yeah. it's the, the whole movie is built up in a lot of different ways, but that's one of the things they build up throughout the movie is, is something. And I, I won't ruin it for other, other people who haven't seen it, but man, it, that one scene is worth seeing the movie. It's uh 
and I like movies. I like the Three Stooges. I I like blooper reels. I I like things that make me laugh. I I I have a great value, like you're saying, for people and things that are humorous to me. I would rather go hunting with someone that we never shoot anything because we're both giggling in the deer blind, than than to sit with some professor you know who who has a a PhD in huntology. I you know just I I would I remember my son and I went hunting one time. We said for us to shoot a deer. The deer would have to be deaf, blind, um, and unable to smell. And I won't get into any more details about that. But we just sat there and giggled in the tree. And I, we're never going to shoot anything like this. But, yeah. but it was it was a good hunt because it was bonding time between two people, father and son, who really enjoyed each other. So I, I agree wholeheartedly. I think laughter is a, a beautiful way to lubricate life in general. Right. So we want to encourage you as a leader. You, you're, you're dealing yeah. with a lot of serious stuff. Inject some laughter on a regular yeah. basis yeah. into your world. Secondly, uh, the second item of the a good emotional maintenance plan is exercise. Um, and, and, and exercise has the same effect on our brain many times as laughter does. You know, it helps us to burn yeah. off the yeah. energy. It reduces yeah. stress. It uh, And there's yeah. research that indicates it may help us to create new brain cells. Um, yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Like so like laughter exercise is medicinal. And the good thing there is you don't yeah. have to spend three hours in a gym to get the effect. I mean, you yeah. go off you go out for a 20, 30 minute walk, it yeah. will have it'll yeah. have a huge effect on the on the fullness of your emotional yeah. and mental world. Um yeah. let me give you another one, healthy distraction. Yeah. Boy, mm-hmm. man, leaders need healthy distractions. Uh running out hunting. Of yeah. <laughs> yeah, the hunting, right? Yeah, you know, the, yeah. the giggle hunting. Uh, yeah. Running on a full tank requires you to inject a little bit of healthy distraction into your life. Mm-hmm. Again, you don't need a lot of it, just a little. You know, yeah. Jim, just enough to lose yourself in it to the point where you're not thinking about anything serious. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. You know, and what, I would say to you, and I know you know the answer to this question, but aren't grandkids wonderful for all of these oh. things? I have yes. my soul is full. My body is exhausted. Um, all the Twinkies are gone and none of the broccoli is, you know, it, it's a, it's a, it's such a beautiful thing. And there actually was a study that came out last week that grandparents who are active in their grandchildren's lives live longer than grandparents who are not. And I, that's gotta be why they, yeah. they're enjoying, they're exercising, they're investing and, right. uh, and you live longer because there's a lot more to live for when, when those little Drug rats are running around your house. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, there are feel-good chemicals released in my brain. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I hear one of my granddaughters <clears throat> giggling about something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Being yeah. It's silly about something. Or, yeah. yeah. So, so you know, leading a ministry, leading a business, that's serious work. We know yeah. that. But God yeah. didn't wire you to be on high alert 24-7. Um, no. <laughs> you need some distraction, you know, um, it's winter here in Michigan. Um, but you know, soon spring will, 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 uh, spring upon us and, uh, you'll be, you can get out in the yard and, you know, you know, here's some things that you can lose yourself in, like, you know, planting flowers, playing yep. 18 holes of golf, uh, when it gets warmer yep. here in Michigan, take a walk on the beach, yeah. um, you know, but finding something that you can lose yourself in for even an hour yes. has, this, yeah. has this amazing effect on the level of fuel in your emotional tank. And so, Jim, we got to hustle here. Let me give you, because yeah. we're, we're up against time, let me give you one yep. more item in our emotional maintenance plan, and that's sleep. Yeah. Uh, we did an entire pod all the way back, episode 13, which yeah. is a long wow. time ago. We're on 180 now. Wow. Years ago. Power, yeah. On the power of sleep. Uh, yeah. we, we're learning that seven to nine <laughs> hours of sleep each night gives your brain the space it needs to repair itself. Yeah. To flush toxins. Uh, and, and we believe that getting the right amount of sleep is actually a cheat code for you as a leader. Um, yeah. And that the negative effects of sleep deprivation are so great that and this is actually uh, researched that people who are hung over outperform those who are sleep deprived. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
crazy. <laughs> and it, you know, in Mark chapter six, Jesus, we read this about Jesus and the apostles. It says the apostles gathered around him and reported all the things they had done and taught. And it goes on to say, then because so many people were coming and going that they didn't even have a chance to eat. Yeah. And I think sometimes as leaders, we get that busy. Yes, we do. But if there's not even room for a meal because yeah. people, there's so many people. If Jesus says to them, come with me by yourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Not with these people tagging along by yeah. yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Mm -hmm. So they went away yeah. by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. Yeah. So, Love it. so this, this, the sleep and the rest component, Jesus prioritized that. And if we, you know, mm -hmm. really observe his life, Jim, we, 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 we learned that you, we never see him stressed except for Gethsemane, right? Yeah. Yeah. He was stressed there. Yeah. And why, why did he live? Why could he live that way? Because he was running on a full tank. Yeah. He had it figured out. And I think if we figure it out, it, it really is a bellwether of how long we'll be able to run our race, how fruitful we'll be. Absolutely. And how much fun we'll have along yeah. the way. So Jim, real quick, can you wrap <clears throat> us up? Because we, you know, we're, we're yeah, really I just, I just want to say if there's been seven podcasts that we've done out of the last 180, the last seven are are some of the most important. Would you agree? Some of the most important so. ones we've ever done. I, think so. I know we talk about staff and we talk about marriage and we talk about staff, but this, this is the precursor that makes all those other things work. Do this wrong, nothing works. Do this right, everything has a real chance of, of working itself That's through. Right. So God bless you, our listeners. Our, and we can help you with this. We can help you with a plan. We can help with coaching. We can write things down. We can hold you accountable. That's what coaches do. So if you were looking to, to increase in these areas, I would really strongly I'd go to convergecoach.com, click on the link and say, I want to spend 30 minutes. And, and we're going to assess, can we be useful to you? If we can't, trust me, we're not bored. <laughs> We've got a lot to do, but we're investors. And we're always looking for, for leaders that by adding this, they can become something so much more. So if we can help you, we're here to do that. Convergecoach.com, God bless you. And uh, put these things into practice as you continue to lead from alignment.